Can we can we do it like a new girl? Can we have like a frame and it just be like, who's that guy? It's Alex. China has held the trophy for the world's fastest supercomputer for the last five years, but now the United States has climbed to the top once again with Summit, an AI-powered supercomputer developed as a joint project between IBM, NVIDIA, and Oak Ridge National Laboratories in Tennessee. The previous champ has 93 petaflops of processing power, while Summit hits a staggering 200 petaflops, meaning it can process 200,000 trillion calculations per second. The system includes 4,608 compute servers, each housing two Power9 CPUs, which use non-X86 chips designed for server and AI workloads, and six NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs, giving it more than 10 petabytes of memory. That's 10,000 terabytes. I haven't taken that many bytes of anything in my whole life. We've all had the experience of revisiting an old game and being surprised that the graphics suck way worse than we remember. Like Star Wars Battlefront 2? Like, oh, 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 but now, Nvidia is trying to keep that from happening to future games. Or at least that's what their new patent, Infinite Resolution Textures, suggests. Oversampling old games to super high resolutions we use today can introduce artifacts that look yucky. And that's because the textures used in those games were designed for a particular scale in mind. The new infinite resolution textures, though, use scalable vector graphics that automatically adapt to the screen resolution the game is running on. So I guess when I'm playing Rocket League on my 16K 720Hz monitor in 2030, the graphics will suck, but at least there won't be any scaling artifacts. Neat. But not all patents are cool. Google is seeking a patent that will give it broad rights over a compression technique that's been open source for years. Asymmetric numeral systems compression was created by Dr. Jaroslaw Duda from the Jagala... Why would you do this to me, James? University in Poland, who dedicated the technique to the public domain. But since the technique was introduced in 2014, Facebook, Apple, and Google have all created software based on it. And now Google wants to patent one of their specific applications, a video encoder in this case, which they say relies on additional work from Google engineers. But Duda argues that Google's patent just applies ANS to a conventional video decoder and doesn't want to see it go through unless Google guarantees that the patent will become open for all to use. And pinky swears don't count. You gotta spit on your hands. Sp I'm not spitting on my hands. Let's be bread brothers. <laughs> bread, bread brothers. <laughs> and now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by question mark US. What? Brought to you by Oh, by us, us. not the US, us. <laughs> <laughs> LTX 2018 is the meetup and tech event coming up on July 14th at the Richmond Olympic Oval here in beautiful British Columbia. Meet the Linus Tech Tips team and participate in everything from cable management challenge to a LAN tournament to VR and 12K gaming stations. That's only a glimpse of what's on offer, so come out and see us. Tickets are just 35 Canadian pesos, and you can buy them at ltxexpo.com or in the link below. Quick, quick, quick! Computex is over now, but there's still some stuff to be excited about in the afterglow, like new prototype coolers from Noctua. The prototypes focus on improving either motherboard clearance to make room for that tall RGB RAM you've been eyeing, or raw performance with extra heat pipes and increased surface area. Oh and Chromax coolers that are gonna be available in all black, in case you like your PC to run in night mode. The first 1,000 flamethrowers from Elon Musk's boring company made into the hands of customers on Saturday. This first round of units had to be picked up in person at the company's HQ in LA, while the remaining 19,000 due to customs rules will be shipped with a new name on the box. Not a flamethrower. Silly rules deserve silly workarounds. Future Apple Watches will be reportedly less physically clicky, as these physical buttons will be swapped for solid state haptic buttons, a la the iPhone 7's home button. It's unclear whether the new buttons, which will be in the same configuration as before, will appear on their new watches this fall or not until 2019. So, watch, watch out? Yeah. I hope this isn't the ending pun. Ah? Is it? Is yeah. It? So, oh. That was amazing. Wow. Oh, but that wasn't the end. 
E3 is happening now, and already a bunch of sweet games have been announced, including Halo Infinite, which runs on 343's new Slipspace engine, and a new Gears of War game that's just called Gears 5, and even a tease of Bethesda's Elder Scrolls 6, aka Skyrim 2, if you're one of those Gen Z kids. Jake. Yeah, Jake. Oh, and Battlefield 5 is gonna have a Battle Royale mode, because it's 2018. <laughs> Battle yeah. Royale modes are awesome. They are awesome, but we only need PUBG. So that's probably a good spot to end it with a broken game. So thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to hit that like button, get subscribed, and tune in on Wednesday for more linkage. <laughs> yeah! Tick linked! <laughs>